<laughs> hello, hello. So today we have Alex Jenadinic here with us. Woo! And um, last week, if you guys didn't get to see the live call that uh, the YouTube video that we did, you definitely have to check that out on YouTube on the uh, on our page because it was absolutely awesome. And in fact, it was, you know, all of these interactions that I've been having with Alex that have inspired me to give him the best resource award for his Udemy classes that he has created for helping people that are just getting started with business. So it's not even just intended specifically for online tutors, but you guys, all of the content that he teaches is absolutely incredible. So today we are honoring Alex with the best resource award for tutorpreneurs. Woo! Well, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> and Ricky is joining us. She said hello to uh, to both of us. Hello. Uh hello, Hi, hello, Ricky. Ricky. We're so glad that you are here with us. And uh yeah, so it's it was really cool when we got to connect last week and and you got to kind of share with us. A really a funnel, a system for being able to create a presence to be able to get get found online. It was just kind of, it was, it was just filled with so much awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, Suzanne says in here, she says, uh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so just a quick question. How did you get started with creating courses? Ah, uh, because I was dabbling in YouTube and uh -huh. I think as many people know, you know, YouTube is great for exposure. But the monetization is a little bit lagging for entrepreneurs, for creators. Right. And Udemy really offers, if you have a certain expertise, which as a tutor, you totally do, mm -hmm. you can take that area of expertise, whether it's math or history or how to study for a test, like the SATs, you can take that and actually create online courses that are just more professionally put together. So YouTube for me was almost like a playground for learning, and I'm still learning how to create good videos and how to manage my audio and how to, you know, video and HD and blah, 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 and presentation skills. And there's so many aspects to video that when you, when you do embark on creating, you know, the next step, the Udemy courses or courses on your own site, that at least their quality. And so the YouTube is kind of like the playground for the Udemy or your own courses so that whoever actually buys your courses gets the quality stuff. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So that Absolutely. Was, so I kind of was originally on YouTube, and then I was like, "Oh, the monetization is better if I sell it as a paid course." And so yeah. it was a very natural transition. Yeah. Now Udemy, they they've changed their pricing model quite a bit over time, haven't they? Yeah, they changed it many times. Um, <laughs> now, essentially, you should never pay more than ten dollars for a course, okay. or you can pay like eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's fine because the different times they have different sales. But all the courses are marked like $100, $200. But that's generally to make it seem like the discount is pretty big. And I, the yeah. truth of it is really I think that by now, a lot of the courses on Udemy, they're so good. And I'm not saying mine. I'm saying generally other people's courses are good that you are getting a super deal for the 10 bucks. For sure. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. And 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 the content that you are putting out there is just completely top-notch content that can can help um, just about anybody who is starting an online business. It doesn't even have to be just tutors, just anybody looking to be able to start a business. They're going to get a lot of value out of those uh, courses that you have on there for $10. And I appreciate you for sticking around with them and, and, and not leaving them because it is awesome to have some really great content. And I noticed um, as I was going through your courses, there was uh, bits and pieces that would say like updated in May, updated in April. So you're not only creating these courses, but you're also updating the courses. Tell us about that process. Yeah. It's a, so now I have over a hundred different courses and it's a little bit difficult to always stay updated, but I do my best to, you know, like if Google changes their algorithm, to make sure that my students know, right? Whereas if you get your mm -hmm. research from online articles or YouTube, like, you know, like they're, they're made once and a few years later, they're all obsolete for the most part. But I yeah. kind of try to, okay, like once you're a student, you have lifetime access. So I try to make sure that students from three years ago 
are still getting the current stuff. And a lot of my mm. students, they come back and they, they, they compliment. Like they say, wow, it's really great. I came back to the course two years later and I saw all the videos. Or, like they watched it originally. It said 100% complete, but now it's like 50% complete. So, you know, I, and also I, even though I still have a long way to go at, at making courses better, as soon as I figure out how to improve something, then I go like, oh my God, now I have to improve all that in all my <laughs> previous courses. So, wow. Half of my work is just improving the old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That that really does take time and it takes dedication and it takes, you know, that passion to be able to help people and serve people in the best possible way. Yeah. It does, I think it does make people a little bit nervous to be able to get content about social media online because they don't want to waste their time finding out information that worked, you know, a month ago or three months ago. And then and now it doesn't work anymore. You know, it's yeah. it's. And it's, it's hard. Also, another issue people have is like, it's not just the outdated stuff. It's like, if, if you're a person who takes 10 minutes to say something that should be said in two minutes, that also is so annoying because the, mm -hmm. the, the student, like, they're just gonna, the information is there, but they have to like get to the information. And if it's too much of a pain, they'll quit also. So I mm -hmm. try to always make my delivery snappy in the courses and I, you know, redo the videos and I try to, like, oh, I said this in five minutes. Can I say it in four minutes? It's same mm -hmm. points, but just make sure that the listeners aren't sleeping. And I think it's a rare thing for, you know, on YouTube, it's not common that people put that much care into the production. Sure. Yeah, there definitely can be a, a much did. different process uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. When we did our video, of course, we put care into the production, but other people That's don't. That's what we did. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If you're if you're looking at our videos on YouTube, we put time and care into our videos and uh, make sure that we have the best possible side of ourselves represented, right? And but not everybody takes the time to do that. You know, they'll be like shooting videos in their car and and doing that kind of stuff. And you know, um, while there can be some benefit there, it's a lot of times those kind of calls are are just like people rambling, right? Yeah, they are and. Because they know that they're going to get less out of it, so they put less in. It's all that process, you know, and which is really what Udemy solves. It's like next level in quality. You, you might not be getting like TV level quality or university level quality, but for the price versus what you, the quality the level that you do get, I think it's one of the better deals around. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys, if you're just joining us, we are here with Alex and he's receiving the best resource award um, from Tutorpreneurs. And I just want to let you know that if you're visiting us and you're watching this video, uh, definitely hit like on this page, become an online tutor, and you can also get something for free. So all you have to do is click on send message if you're on the become an online tutor page and write, type in the word tutor. If you type in that word, I'm going to give you a free copy of my book, Job Security for Life and Teaching, How to Become an Online Tutor. So we're glad that you guys are here. If at any point in time you guys have any questions, those of you that are live with us, feel free to add those questions on in here and we will make sure to uh, embed them into uh, this interview and answer them for you. Now, I know that uh, Suzanne and Ricky, they saw that video that we did last week. So if you guys have any questions about any content that we uh, we talked about last week, definitely add that on the, in there as well. So um, what are some of the what are some of the benefits uh, that you have seen for? Well, actually, let's go to this one. There are. Do you see certain kinds of courses being more popular on Udemy than other kinds of courses? Courses that give immediate um, impact to mm -hmm. a person's professional life. So anything from, I think you, you know, for tutorpreneurs, it's more a home, a self business, right? Like a like a, a business that they own on their own. Um, but it can be broader than that because a lot of people want to learn skills to get a job or something like that. So right. so the more immediate impact can be made and the greater impact can be made in the course. So like if I teach you how to make the next uh, Google, you know, or the, like the next Uber app in one day that you can launch tomorrow, that will get a lot of interest, right? Because it's like right. well, Uber is a billion dollar business and we'll make it tomorrow and I'm gonna say, oh, and it's easy and blah, blah, you know, so it's easy, fast, a lot of results and of mm. course, that sounds like a scam. 
So, and, and it's impossible to do that. So, but the closer that you can get, give something legitimate, right? You know, uh, because people really will, it, it really will resonate with people when you present something as easy to do. Because, you mm -hmm. know, even you and I, like, we don't want anything difficult to do. Okay. So, and we, you know, like, if you're selling us something, make it easy to follow and figure out. Don't put that burden on us. So, make right. it easy, make it fast. And if there's no good results, we're not going to take it. But if there are good goals for the course, if there are good results, then people will immediately want that. It's it's the mm -hmm. most natural thing. And you and I will respond in the very same way. You're like, oh, you know, this will take me a six months to learn. Maybe no, right? But if it's, if it's quick, we can do it in our busy schedules, then we'll buy it. So so those, you know, they're, they're very universal um, things that I think most people will be like, yeah. That's my situation too, you know. Um, yeah. Th yeah, those yeah. are those are really the the courses and um, also technical skills. They're very popular on Udemy or in general. And then after that, business skills tend to be you know marketing, design, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. They tend to be kind of second. Mm -hmm. So think about the results that your ideal client would want and then be able to create courses based off of those results is probably going to get you um, the most money at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like me, like when I went to college, like my professors would yell at me. They're like, don't ask like questions, figure it out. You know, like that's the whole point of your, they literally told me like, hey, in college you learn to figure it out. I mean, I just have to point you in the direction. You go figure it out, and mm -hmm. that's what I thought education was. Like that's what they did to me. But in online education, the more you can explain to the person, to the student, the the better because it's just easier for them to have a better experience. There's no need to make them jump through all these hurdles. And so the more you really can take them step by step into something, make it easy. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, it, you, obviously your video creation has changed over time as you, you learn more and more. In the beginning, how long would you say on average it would take you to be able to create a course? It never took me that long because I'm not a big planner. So I think, although that in a sense it's deceiving because anyone who has a expertise the, the the thing that takes the most time is really to gain enough expertise to teach others, and that's mm -hmm. huge, right? But once you have the knowledge, the production, most of the courses are either just like this, talking head format, where you're like mm -hmm. explaining stuff, or you might be screencasting, showing how to do something on the screen. Those don't take a lot of time to create. There's not a tremendous amount of editing. There's no special effects. There's mm -hmm. You know, as long as you're in a quiet place with a good microphone, your camera's all right, like once you get your equipment down and there's no issues, and by the way, there's almost never no issues in a home-based filming environment. There's always some construction that has to happen while you're filming. There's always yeah. a siren. There's always like, you know, the space even, there's echo issues. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of issues like that. But given that you figure out, like let's say 90% of them, um, and you plan out your course well, you know, like just like if you were to write a book you'd, or an essay, you'd like create an outline and then you'd go, okay, hit that point, that point, that point. Then as, as long as you go, you know, through your outline, which even though I'm not a big planner, I am big into outlines, which is, I guess it's planning. But um, it, it's actually the cadence of creating a course, like it, 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 it's a flow. So it's, I, I, a lot of people take like, months to create their course but mm -hmm. i don't think it should take like you know per one hour of content that you're creating i mean it shouldn't take you more than a week of full, like full-time work or a, okay or a big part-time uh chunk of time like it shouldn't okay. be over a week okay unless now, suzanne, suzanne was wondering when you divide up your content for a lesson how many minutes of video do you make one lecture Okay, it's a very good and very common question. So, um, generally, if I try to stay five minutes or less per lecture, and if I'm seeing that, okay, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes, I'm probably making 
multiple points in that video that can be split up. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is probably I'm packing too many things or very likely I went on a tangent. <laughs> and the tangents, you know, they, in natural conversation, they feel natural, but on video, they're, yeah. they're just, why did you, like, why do I have to give that example? So I think something like that, you see, okay, like seven minutes video, then probably you, there's three things. Either the top subject matter is very complex or you went on a tangent, you can refilm and make it like, five, you know, shorter or um, you may be uh, covering multiple points that you can then split it. Uh, th those are usually the symptoms, but I'd say keeping those symptoms in mind, don't focus so much on the time, focus on as long as you're one point, one main point per video, focus on making sure that you're really driving that point home. And if you need to create examples, people actually like examples. So that ex good examples are not wastes of time. And if you feel right. like the video is becoming too long with the example, just split the theory and the next video will be the example video. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great suggestion. And do, do, are you finding that people are having like a, a kind of a shorter attention span and that dividing it by like that helps them to uh, feel more accomplished at the end? Because they do, it does tell them like how much of the course, like they finished and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. And you know, we, we, you, what you really don't want to confuse is any kind of in-person situations with course taking with online. Because online, for if they're bored for three seconds, the very next entertaining thing is one click away. So mm -hmm. you really want to keep people's attention. And you yeah. want to be delivering, what you want to keep in mind is pacing. And pacing yeah. is the concept of like, you know, in comedy and education is like the aha moments. How quickly are they coming? And mm -hmm. the thing that you promised people in the beginning, right? Like that you're going to accomplish this. How fast and how, it, it, like, you know, how optimized is your course to delivering that to them without too many introductions and too many, like, um, tangents and too many basic things to cover in theory before getting to the practical stuff? Because yes. at the end of the day, you know, it's professional education, continued education. So, it's practical. It's got to be practical. So as long as you're taking them towards where they're going, they'll be generally happy. Mm -hmm. um, but just what, watch for like when your course slows down and delivering quality insights. That that's yeah. like skills engagement. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and, and make, make it seem really like. like like you're having a conversation with somebody, very conversational. Yeah. One to be natural. Thing people make sometimes is I see it all the time. People say, Hey guys, in this video we're gonna cover such and such. But for the person watching, it's not hey guys, it's it's I'm there by themselves. So it's hey, hello, hi, how are you? Or you wanna address them as the individual that makes the that in, to your point that makes that immediate impact. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, I'm changing my system up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. That's so good. So for, for somebody who would be brand new to creating these courses, what, what, what are your best pieces of advice that you could give them? I think it's to identify your true expertise. And then some people, they have, people have this like varying degrees of confidence in their expertise. There are many people who are super expert, but don't have the confidence. Mm -hmm. While there are many people who are not expert at all, but they have this boldness. So mm -hmm. as long as you know, you really have to pick whatever your expertise is in and find your confidence in it as well. Because there's a lot of mm -hmm. this imposter syndrome where like, do I really know the subject matter? I only know it like, you know, like I'm not like the best in it, you know. So you know, you don't have to be professor to teach beginners. In fact, that's probably probably over, you know, like, you know, that overqualified teach beginners, but you know, as long as you're solid in a subject matter, find the confidence to teach it. And then there's the common questions are, you know, is it a lucrative niche? You know, like mm -hmm. if you're teaching, you know, that, that typical, the underwater basket weaving, right? Uh, no one's buying that. Or how to tie shoelaces, <laughs> nobody's buying that. But if you're teaching some practical skill people can take, and if it's a common 
you know, skill in demand. Okay, perfect. Then, and the next question right after that is like, is this a super crowded niche or how can I stand out if it is? So for mm -hmm. example, a really good example of this is when I had my, that, my, my best marketing course, uh, at first I was like, I named it marketing strategies and you know, like, Every other course is called marketing strategies or tactics or whatever. It, it was bland. It didn't stand out. And then I changed the title to after, like, I you know, started reaching millions of people. I was like, okay, well, I'm using these strategies and I'm reaching millions of people. So I'll change the title to marketing strategies to reach a million people. And then that course started selling like hotcakes. And mm -hmm. because everybody wants that benefit, right? If you're in business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's maybe too much of a benefit because if you have a coffee shop or a restaurant, you can't even reach it. Like you, you can't put them all in your. So, but that crazy benefit um, really made a difference. So, it's, if you're in, if you are in a comp, in a competitive space, I mean, then you have to figure out like, can I compete here? Can I? How can I differentiate? Can I dominate the whole niche? Can I dominate a sub niche? And then, is the sub niche lucrative enough for me? Is there enough like meat on that bone? Um, mm -hmm to make enough money to meet at least some of my financial goals. And those are the initial questions. But at the same time, sometimes too many questions and too much planning, people will always find, oh yeah, that's the challenge. And then they won't do it. Mm. So sometimes plowing in is justifiable because at least it gives you that those learning experiences that you would have never had if you we're always on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. The barrier to entry for to entry for courses is not that great that you have to really plan it. I mean, if it really just takes you a week of work to get potentially some money to get in the game, it's not like you're planning a startup that will take a lot of money and a year of your time, right? So sometimes if it's you know such a low barrier to entry, just plow in. That's okay in this case. Mm -hmm. For your first thing at least. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, how would you suggest that people go about finding a lucrative niche, a niche, 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 what, yeah. however you want to say it? So they're out there, right? Um, anything, anything, making money, anything, um, growing, starting a business, even better, everything technical. There, mm -hmm. there is a um, market for it generally, any kind of. The problem with it is, is technical courses are much harder to make because everything technical has to be verified, re-verified, and as well, if one thing is off place, people, you know, it's easy to spot. So they're harder to make, um, but they ge generally tend to be more lucrative. So mm -hmm. if you know programming or if you know anything about tech, things like mm -hmm. that, that's the number one niche in online courses. But for most people, it's not their area of expertise. Um, you know, especially in the online business, online marketing people. So, but then those guys have, you know, skills of starting a business or specific skills that are in their business. Like in, for like the tutor example, right? Everyone who's tutoring, that's the, the, that that's an area of expertise. And, you know, it's, it's like if you're tutoring SAT studying or, you know, that's a super lucrative thing. And Udemy may be a way to stand out on it so that, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. If you could, if you could create an SAT course or um, even like break it down into, you know, certain areas about the SAT, like, um, you know, you know, how to successfully take the SAT in the time allotted, you know, because <laughs> that's like one of the biggest problems is that they, the people are running out of time or on the SAT. Yeah, the, the, that's a great example. But in addition, you can slice the SAT in so many ways. Like, mm -hmm. there is, like, maybe I have, you know, I've taken it a long time ago, so I forgot. But, like, there are certain types of math problems that are going to be prevalent on it. Mm -hmm. Like, master, let's call them fractions. I don't know what they are, mm -hmm. but let's call them, like, master fractions for the SAT. So, any fraction question you get, you're like, boom, perfect. Yep. Right? It, it, yeah. That's a problem area for a person. Or master some other, like, variables or, you know, whatever math concepts come up. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of courses even within the SAT. And also, if you can create something that leads to a certification, so not necessarily mm -hmm. SAT, but um, if you can teach, I think maybe let's say if an if instructor needs a certification to teach SAT, 
Mm -hmm. You can teach them how to pass the certification process as well. Sure. So those, yeah, yeah, great idea. Anything with certifications yeah. tends to be very lucrative because yeah. that's literally a step to for the students to get the certification and make money. Right, and there are a lot of even in the in the field of education, there's a lot of tests that we have to take in order to become certified, and so yeah, those, all those tests are potential great courses. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And so, based off of the courses that you've created so far, what is your favorite course? Ah, uh, favorite. Um, well, I guess I have that marketing course to reach a million people, and it's my best-selling course now, and it's 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 really led the way for me. So you know, of course. I like it, um, and then every every time I make a course, like oh, that's my favorite now. <laughs> but I really like a combination. I have a few courses that I um, created, and they're like a little bit next level. Like, mm -hmm. like I think when you're in business, a lot of the day to day business is how do I get the clients, how do I make money, how do I do the immediate. But for me, what I've noticed is like I perfect certain skills and my business would kind of go like this, you know, like kind of flat. And then I like master something. Let's for, for example, like better production of courses mm -hmm. and that leads to better reviews and that leads to better, a lot of stuff. And so better reviews, better recommendations, the courses like up, flat, flat, flat. And then they have a, like a leg up. Mm. So most of the time I see like the, the legs up in my business. It's not really like linearly up. It's more like leg up and, leg up and then flat, 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 leg up. So the legs up, I noticed really come up, uh, they really come from me mastering something. Um, maybe it's not a hard skill, maybe it's like time management, focus. So like if I'm focused, I'm producing better results, right? So, and I've identified about 50 soft skills like that by now. Anything from emotional intelligence to time management to goal setting to focus and blah, blah, blah. So discipline, a lot of these skills. And my really favorite courses now that I practice myself are like I have a productivity course and I have an emotional intelligence course. Uh, and together those, and, and in those courses, they have a lot of subfields, like a little bit about creativity, a little bit about a lot of stuff. So, um, and there's a little bit about leadership as well. So I have a leadership course, a productivity course, and a uh, I keep, I, you know, I remember one. I forget the other. But and, and the emotional intelligence course. And the three of them, they, they come close to hitting all fifty of those soft skills. Mm. Maybe not as deep as any one of those, because any one of those soft skills can be a course in itself. Sure. But um, generally, like even the idea of focus, a lot of people they you know like come to me. They're like, how can I get more done? And and mm -hmm. I'm like, well, just. Take a lot of the, you know, focus is an ambiguous word because there's some second to second focus on something, but then there's the thing, but like, what are you working on this month? It's also your focus. Mm -hmm. And they're both kind of, you know, like kind of work by taking out a lot of the, not not letting the sub tasks distract you, right? Like, like, like not sub tasks, that's not the right word, but like the non-ideal tasks, taking them out and not letting things distract you. So mm. let's say even in your business, let's say if you're doing 10 things this month, that like the 10th one is probably not going to be that fruitful, but it will mm -hmm. take time away from the most fruitful one. Mm. And if you can take put more time into the more fruitful one, it's going to make you be better at that. And, yeah. um, and I think we even talked on our YouTube conversation where we talked about this pyramid, right? Like mm -hmm. where like, at the top of the pyramid, it's tough going, right? You're competing against all the best. So if you can put more effort and get better results from your, you know, like climbing up the pyramid and compete with, you know, you produce better products, compete with better people, um, that might end up giving you much better results than wasting time on the 10th thing. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, what they do is like the 80-20. They like literally take, hey, where are my ten, top 10 tasks? What if I just take the bottom eight out? You know, mm. and it seems like, oh my God, I'm going to take the bottom eight tasks out. And, you know, for different people, it can be the bottom five or bottom six, you know, whatever. But like, mm -hmm. as long as they identify things that are, take more time, disproportionately more time than ultimately the results they get, they free up their time and 
this time can either go to their family or this time can go into let's double down on the first and second thing because that's mm -hmm. the money making tasks. Right. And that's so important to think about are what are the income producing tasks and which are the um, really the distractors in my business? And the Yeah. And it's so good to in liberating to take away, identify and then take away the distractors because um, mm -hmm. that's the focus. And so you can accomplish a tremendous amount, especially for a single person business. You really have to. But if you don't, mm -hmm. that's it. Like if you're doing the wrong things and if you're a single person business, the whole business is going off the rails, right? So yeah. it's not growing. And you're sitting, why am I not growing? Why is the business not growing, right? And if and it's only that one of the 50 tasks, uh, not tasks, um, skills that mm -hmm. just just focus, just being able to identify what to work on. If you become better at that, mm -hmm. it can create such a difference in your business. And so when you be, you know over time become better at all those 50 tasks. It's such a snowball effect that for me, I see the biggest results from those because those mm -hmm. are the ones that lead you to the specifics, like mm -hmm. the marketing tactics, the execution, all that. So it yeah. sort of starts with this soft skill. Awesome. Now, I noticed you have a copywriting course, and I noticed that you have phenomenal copywriting for each of your courses. I don't How know. I, I always second guess my copywriting. I think we all do. <laughs> but how important is what you say about your course in the actual selling process of your course? It's really important because what do people want to know? I mean, well, let's even back up. How do people even discover your course, right? Yeah. You maybe see it in while browsing, like in my case, it's Udemy. So while browsing Udemy or even mm -hmm. like books, it's the same principle if you're selling things on Amazon. People are going to browse or search, and they're going to see your item, book, course, whatever, search result on Google in a line of other products. Mm -hmm. So even before they click on your item, they have to pick it out of a line. Almost sounds like a criminal, right? Like out a of line a line. <laughs> so they take you know all the top ten or whatever results and. Whoever has, there's very usually very few met, few things that make your item stand out. Title is the biggest, and you know if it's a Google search result, it's title, description, it's a really. Um, Udemy's very same thing. It's the course image, which is you know a stock image. It doesn't really help. Uh, and then it's the title. If your title promises something better, then people are going to be like, oh, you know, I want to reach a million people or. Yep. Like I want this thing in one day, you know, like, so, so I think for people, things that make your title stands out are, um, deadlines, like, you know, I can't, like lose weight in 30 days or in mm -hmm. seven days or, you know, like, so, so the time, you know, by when and a big benefit, um, like, you know, reach a million people, right? Benefit when, and the actual thing you're promising has to be something that they actually really want. So it mm -hmm. can't be something that you think that they want, like, you know, like, but it's, it has to come from, you know, is there demand for that thing? And is, is that right. great? Like, um, so if it's a big enough to benefit and it seems like it's easy and it seems like you have a unique approach, you know, like, um, then that's the making of your exciting title and that's going to get you a higher click through than the other people on the search page. And that's, yeah your title and then of course you once people click on it you reinforce what they're going to get in the description and all the other marketing elements that are on your page mm -hmm. and you get it you know at first the title is to get them excited but then you have to build on this interest because at some point you know they at first they ask what's in it for me right the title mm -hmm. the benefit the second thing they'll ask like is it true like yeah What's their credibility? Can can it really get me those? Or they're just saying, right? Mm -hmm. um, going to waste my, or is it going to waste my time? And blah blah blah. Right. So you have to address that. And part of how you address that is, you know, like on a course or in a book, you can tell them what's in the book. You can, like, in on a Udemy, like they literally can browse the, the lectures and the titles. Mm -hmm. so they can tell, or in a, on on Amazon, they have the free preview of the. They can see the the chapters but also they can read a couple of pages for free so they can see so all those things 
work to they kind of work together they have to all resonate you know and then all of those elements sort of work together to improve conversion mm -hmm. yep so i suzanne is curious how much marketing do you have to do outside of unimi so that people sign up for your course that's a good question uh i get this question all the time if you are so i'll give you a very good answer if you are um marketing something on what's called a platform or what i call a platform a platform can be uh udemy or amazon so it's not your site okay uh if you're marketing your own site stuff on your site is different but if you're marketing on a platform on the platform most of your sales will come from the platform i'll tell you exactly how they'll come from you know because amazon or udemy like we can't out market them like like they're just vast and our job yeah. is, more, is more to tap into their resources than bring our resource into it okay so the way to do it is so so even okay so even within in, in the platform people really only discover you there in a couple of ways by browsing or searching mm -hmm. and so you, so you have to do the work so the work is not outside the platform it's on the platform so if you have to figure out how to rank higher. You have to figure out how to get recommended, how to show up next to the other items. And it's usually all like the usual suspects. More, you know, more better reviews, uh, better product, more engagement, all those things they work on to get, you know, no matter what the platform is, if you're promoting on YouTube, if YouTube's gonna recommend you, if you're promoting on, on Amazon, Amazon's gonna recommend you, and if you're promoting on Udemy, Udemy is going to recommend you with one caveat that's less talked about that um, total money made is a big factor in how much they'll recommend you because if you do your copywriting and they get a sense like, oh, this course is converting, then that means they're making more money too. Right. And they'll have, so a lot of Amazon and Udemy promotion and even like YouTube promotion, they're like, okay, you know, this is making us more money too, so we're gonna promote this more. Mm -hmm. you know, like, so that's the one thing you can do is boost sales from the outside, and mm -hmm. the more sales you get from the outside, okay, you'll get you'll get more reviews and all that. But it's usually hard to keep pushing things that way. What's usually easier is you push it a little bit, and then the course it, or book, if it's good, it will start you know selling more and better, and and it will. Maybe not right away, but it will get on that sort of track where um, it will self-perpetuate higher, higher, higher in their ecosystem. Mm. And the better it is, the more and faster you will do. And of course, you can add fuel to the fire by promoting from the outside like, to your own audience, but it's to a much lesser degree than basing your entire promotion on outside from the outside. Because mm -hmm. the only purpose of the outside is to fuel the fire of on-platform marketing. I may be right. getting a little bit technical here with this SEO and recommendation, but, but really that's how you get Amazon and Udemy and even YouTube and places like that to really promote your stuff. Awesome. And you, do, you have courses on like how to do copywriting, how to create books um, and, and be a bestseller in Amazon and you personally are a three-time Amazon bestseller. Uh, maybe even more now <laughs> since I've read that information. <laughs> Actually, it's not that hard to be honest to become an Amazon bestseller. So I think at some point I became like a seven time because it's not right. that hard and it's just like right. it doesn't even sound right anymore. You know, like what the heck is the seven times so much like three times sounds great. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> So yeah, so people can take a look at that. And if you're looking for um, Alex's courses that he particularly has um, that delve into all of these topics, you can go to problemio.com slash courses.html, or you can just go to problemio.com, just click on the courses tab, 
it'll bring you there and you'll be able to uh, check those out. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Again, congratulations on receiving the best resource award for Tudorpreneurs. And thanks for sharing your success tips with us on, on what you've done in Udemy that works and, and how to really get a course so that people can find it and can buy it and, and really how to, to boost sales. I, I'm super excited about this. And uh, Ricky says uh, that she says, thank you. She's got to actually leave. So she, she was just saying, thank you so much uh, for your perspective of Udemy. And um, they're all saying congratulations on your success as well. So awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been fun. It has been fun. Thank you so much again. And uh, and you guys, th again, if you're here and you're visiting us on becomingonlinetutor.com, just click like and uh, you can receive a free copy of my book, which is Job Security for Life and Teaching How to Become an Online Tutor by clicking on that blue button and just typing in the word tutor. Thanks, you guys, for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.